in slalom, everyone's chasing Camille Duval, who enjoys a 400-point lead. In the men's jump, a two-way race with Mike Hazelwood leading Sammy Duval by 200 points. And in the men's freestyle, Scott Clack remains unbeaten, but this may be the day that he falls. The USA Network presents exclusive coverage of the 1985 Coors Light International Water Ski Tour, the Tournament of Champions from Shreveport, Louisiana, featuring the world's top men and women competitors in professional water skiing. The 1985 Coors Light International Water Ski Tour is brought to you by Coors Light. Coors Light turns it loose with professional water skiing. Ski Supreme, the leader and innovator of world-class luxury for the demanding skier. And by Mastercraft, the standard by which all others are judged. From beautiful Champion Lake in Shreveport, Louisiana, the ninth stop on the Coors Light International Water Ski Tournament here on a gorgeous afternoon in Shreveport. Champion Lake very aptly named because it was here a year ago that Bob LaPointe set the world record in the men's slalom. Hello again, everyone. Kevin Slayton alongside Wayne Grimditch. And Wayne, if form holds true, we may see some record-setting performances here today. Well, this is definitely one of the superior sites in water skiing. It's fabulous. I wish I was able to ski, you know, at this site. It's really that great. Uh, there's an enthusiastic crowd, and the skiers in the past have responded with tremendous performances. So it could, could happen today. In the slalom department on the women's side, Camille Duval has what would seem to be an insurmountable lead. It sure does. However, Karen Roberge mathematically still has a chance, so that looks to be a tough competition particularly for second and third. On the men's side, Mike Shalander has won four events, but he had such a lousy event in Orlando that Bob LaPointe is hanging in there despite winning only at Orlando. Bob's 100 points back. Now, Michael, it's his first year here. He's really been skiing for recognition. He's won four events, so he's a legitimate threat. Let's not forget Andy Mapple. He's only 200 points behind. Are you surprised that Shalander's leading? A little bit, but boy, he is so strong, and uh, uh, he's got some great slalom ability. On the freestyle side, Scott Clack remains unbeaten through all of the events on the tour this year, but he was pushed the last time. Well, it seems to be a predictable event. However, it's never been dull. Last weekend, Scotty had to go 133 feet to win the competition over Mike Tolzman, and Joe Allo has been very tough, too, so it looks to be a great competition. The men's distance jumping appears to be a two-horse race. Mike Hazelwood leading, but Sammy Duvall breathing down his neck. Well, I really think Lucky Lowe's the story here. He's been jumping great since his Marine World vic victory. Uh, he's got a huge confidence boost. Mike and Sam are battling out for the overall. There are only 200 points separating those two. I think the jumping competition today will be unbelievably tough. You're thinking that Lucky is on a roll. Lucky is definitely on a roll, and they could get close to 200 feet here today. Well, return to the Tournament of Champions and the start of the Coors Light International Water Ski Tour with the men's slalom after this. Wayne, this course here in Shreveport is one that has record-setting potential. Why don't you explain to the folks about this course? In the slalom event, the boat travels down the center of the course at a constant speed of 34 miles per hour for women and 36 miles an hour for men. The skier must go through the entrance gates around each of the six buoys and out through the exit gates to receive full credit for the pass. After each pass, the rope is shortened, increasing the difficulty of the next pass. Basically, slalom is a race between buoys. The winner is a skier who successfully rounds the greatest number of buoys. The men's slalom competition, always one of the highlights of the Coors Light International Water Ski Tour stops, and no different here in Shreveport. This is the overall point standings as it is currently. Mike Shalander and Bob LaPointe staging a war for first and second. Andy Mapple's only 200 points off the lead, and Lucky Low in fourth. Both Shalander and LaPointe will be skiing here in today's matchups, and of course they will face off in one of the semifinals. So that will be interesting. We may, in fact, have a new leader by the time this tournament is over on the overall point standings. Mike Morgan and John McElyer will make up the other semifinal, and LaPointe and Shalander, the featured semifinal that the crowd is really ready to see. Mike Morgan at 38 off. Now, this is the distance where most of the men's slalom skiers usually have their problems or begin to have their problems. Morgan's best, in fact, is two and a half at 39 off, so he can get it going here at 38 off. 
Rope. This, this is a perfect time for him to do so. He gets a nice start. Pretty good, too. The, the rope here is a half a foot short of the width of the course. They really have to stretch out. He's looking great. Coming into five, I think he's going to make it. The crowd is behind oh. him. I think he went inside the buoy. We'll have to wait and see. It may have been a careless tactical mistake there around the sixth buoy, but we'll wait and see officially what they give him. The crowd certainly getting behind the skiers as they get to the more difficult distances. And that pumped Morgan up, and it looked as though he was going to make it easily. They give him five buoys. He did indeed go inside of buoy number six. So McElyea must beat five at 38 off. That's the story for him. He knows it. It's out in front of him. Perhaps an advantage for the skier to know exactly what he has to do. But Morgan has gone out and set a very hefty pace with five completed buoys at 38 off. So here comes McElyea whose best is four at 39 and a half off. So he's certainly capable of sailing through this course at this distance. And John's looking, whoa! He fell going around turn number three, or buoy number four, I should say, and did not make it through. So in fact, Morgan's pace of five stands up. Yes, it was, five's a good score here. Yesterday uh, in the, in the uh, practice, they were running around four and five. So uh, here, John looked good coming into four, and I thought he was going to make a, a nice turn. Changes his edge, slows down, grabs the handle, and he goes to pull the rope in, and doesn't get his weight back, and the ski kicks out. Bob LaPointe at 38 off. This is a serious test for the current world record holder. He set that record here last year with five buoys at 39 and a half off. And if he's to advance into the finals, you almost get the feeling he's going to have to go through here at 38 off unscathed because Shaylander is certainly capable of this distance. The point skiing with sore ribs, you might remember. Gets injured those in a jumping accident a few weeks ago. Had a great start, a little slow on two, but Bob can make it up oh. in trouble and he loses the rope as he came around four. Well, I was just about ready to say that Bob can make it up on either side. That's characteristic of his great slalom ability. He's won three world titles. He turns usually equally well off of both sides. And here he was a little slow coming off of two. And he comes into four here, and he gets really a little down on the water, perhaps too far down, and the rope sl snaps out of his hands. Now, I don't know whether his ribs came into play there at all, but... There's so much pull and strain on the upper body here. The skiers are pulling anywhere from 700 to 1,000 pounds of pressure on the rope, and he, can, he snaps it in, and then it just jerks right out of his hands, and that's, that's bad luck. Huh? So Mike Shaylander has it in front of him. He needs to beat LaPointe. And if he sails through this course without a problem, he could go for the world record. I'd say he's got a good shot at this. He ran this earlier. Gets down a one. You get that slam dunk style. He just sort of steers and breaks at the waist. Not good turn at two, but it comes out of three. And I think you'll just see him cruise around four. So he advances into the final. That's the benefit of going second. You know exactly what you have to do. He knew he just had to get back to the center of the wakes to get four buoys and move into the final bracket against Mike Morgan. Interesting to be that close to going for a world record and pass the chance for it, although I'm sure he wants to save his strength for the championship round. Kevin Slayton, along with Wayne Grimdish, will be coming back with more of the exciting men's slalom after this. Important for the boats out on the water to maintain a constant level of speed so that the skiers can keep their performance at a very high level. And one of the premier boat drivers in the world, Jack Walker, is here to tell us all about it. Uh, yes, Kevin, that's right. Uh, I have to do my job, and I have to have good equipment to do it with. Unfortunately, we have these great boats that are provided for us by the different manufacturers to tow these water skiers in these professional water ski tournaments. And I have to have very good equipment because it's a very demanding job. I have to have very good speed armors. I have to have very good throttles that'll do the job. that look very smooth between the engine and my hand. And of course, the most important thing in the boat is the engine. And that happens to be PCM, Plagiograph Marine Engines. And they do just a great job. It's a mid-sized engine. And it's, it's, it's powerful enough to do the job without being uh, too rough on the skiers and keeping a constant speed. And that's the name of the game in water skiing. So we're fortunate to have Plagiograph Marine in these engines. Mike Morgan at 35 off. His best score ever was two and a half at 39 off. He may have to better that in order to beat Shaylander, who doesn't show any signs of slowing down. Well, Morgan's looking very tough here, too. I think he's really looking forward to putting the pressure on uh, Mike Shaylander. 
He's coming in at 35 off, a 40-foot rope. This is not an easy pass by any means, but it's been fairly automatic for all of these skiers. Here he's got quick turns. You can just see how his ski accelerates. A little bobble there. But he gets around six, moves on to the next pass. So Mike Morgan applying the pressure to Shaylander that Bob LaPointe could not apply. Mike Shaylander, the top seed coming in, the top man in overall points. He's won two in a row, looking for number three and going against Mike Morgan here in the finals and making his run now at 35 off. Here again, we have a left foot forward skier, Michael Shaylander. Left foot forward skiers generally turn better to the left, and in his case, he turns much better on 135 than he does on 24. Right there, when the skier grabs the handle coming out of the turn, it marks his acceleration, beginning of his acceleration to the next buoy, and he's out through the gates. They move on to the next pass. No problems at all for Shaylander at 35 off, so they'll go to 38. Mike Morgan at 38 off in his semifinal battle with McElyay. He completed five at this distance. So if he can indeed do that again, it would put some pressure on Shaylander. What he'd like to do, of course, ideally, is move through, clear six, and then really put the pressure on Shaylander. This is his battle at 38 off. Let's watch him go. He's around the first two. Morgan giving it a run. He's around three, has trouble, and loses it around four. He got outside of four, but did not clear it coming back in. So a little bit less than he did in his first run at it in the semifinal. Well, I was a little surprised. Uh, some of the skiers have been saying that it, starting at this other end is a little bit easier, but uh, uh, Mike gets a good one and comes out of two fairly well. But here you get C. He loses his angle around three. He has to rotate his ski again. And he comes narrow into four and throws himself to the outside, I believe. The probably just give him three or three and a quarter. There it is, three, three buoys at 38 off for Mike Morgan, and that seems to be perhaps an easy feat for Mike Shaylander. Here is Shaylander now, needs to beat three at this distance, 38 off. And you know, Wayne, they talk about his unorthodox style of skiing, but if he continues to rack up victories at the rate he's doing, they may start teaching that style. <laughs> it could be, he really has a fantastic turn on one. Get a good idea right here. Elbow down the water, and he holds that same angle. You achieve angle in the turn with the ski, and he's able to hang on to it, and he just might run it here. Oh, and he kicks it out. I think he'll get three and a half and win by half a buoy. He didn't I give him much you, of a margin, did he? It's going to be awfully close. It just depends on what they give him. But Shaylander appeared to be coasting until he lost it coming around. Number four, here's another look. Around three, down on the water, but as you see, he holds that ski angle all the way through the wakes, changes edges, slows down, gets down on the water here, and kicks the ski out. I think they'll definitely give him three and a half. Once again, his big turn off of three there. Pulls long and hard through the wakes, changes edge. When they change the edge, they slow down to turn the ski, or it's easier to turn the ski when it's going slower. And they do give him three and a half at 38 off, so Mike Shaylander is the winner of the men's slalom, and that is his third consecutive victory on the tour, his fifth overall, as he defeats Mike Morgan, but for Bob LaPointe, losing the semifinal to Shaylander, one positive note, his world record remains intact. So for the third consecutive stop on this Coors Light International Water Ski Tour, Mike Shaylander has won the men's slalom. Let's go down to Wayne Grimditch, who's standing by with a winner. Thanks, Kevin. Mike, it was a fantastic performance. Uh, how'd you feel out there today? I felt really good. I had a lot of pressure skiing against Bob and then skiing against Mike Morgan, but the conditions are great. All the people here are fantastic, and it's just a perfect sight. I thought perhaps starting uh, at 38 at the other end, it might have been a little easier for you all. Yeah, it, it is a bit easier. The thing is, you got so much pressure when you see the other guy skiing in front of you, so you just want to try to beat him and don't care too much about the performances. Well, congratulations again. You look great out there. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Kevin, do you have the final results for us? I sure do, Wayne. Mike Shaylander is the winner, as we mentioned, for the third consecutive stop, fifth overall for Shaylander. Mike Morgan, a surprise in the final four, finishes second. And John McElyay and Bob LaPointe tie for third. The dynamic freestyle jumping is next, followed by the women's slalom, all coming up exclusively here on the USA Network.
the more exciting events on the Coors Light International Water Ski Tour, and a great crowd pleaser is always the men's freestyle competition. And thus far on the tour, it's been the story of Scotty Clack, his own personal event. He is unbeaten through eight events. Joe Allo is in second, Mike Tolzman third, and Dave Dotter, who didn't even get into the final four round until Somerset, Kentucky, has quietly crept up into the fourth spot. But this could be the day that Scott Clack falls. He barely won the last outing in Birmingham. Dave Dotter with his third jump of the day. Should be a Mobius if he stays as scheduled. His first two jumps, a gainer and a front flip, were performed very, very well. He's looking very solid here. Back Mobius coming up, the most impressive freestyle maneuver of the lot. Edges across the way, has to keep that rope in. It's an awkward position. He comes around. Whoa, that's a great, fabulous effort for Dave Dotter. Good distance on that jump. He's pumped up. He can smell it. It appears after the first two jumps that he and Scott Clack were vying for the top spot in this competition, and Dotter may have moved ahead of him. He looked very, very good on that jump. Well, the crowd always likes to see an upset and an underdog winner. Joe Allo now for his third jump. Should be a flip if he keeps the schedule going as he said he would. This is Joe's bread and butter maneuver right here. The front flip, long, high, nice form generally. That good, good jump for Joe. So he got well out there on his third jump of the day. In order to give you a better understanding of just how these freestyle jumpers get their point totals, here's a look at the breakdown. The helicopter and reverse helicopter, 35 points apiece. You won't see that attempted too often at this caliber. Front and back flip, 75 points apiece. The back Mobius, 125 points. Now it starts to get more difficult. The 720 and front Mobius also get 125 points. The 1080, 175. And the double back Mobius and the double front flip, both of which you're unlikely to see here today, 200 points. Mike Tolzman with his third jump. He fell on his front flip, his first jump. Then he performed the 720 very well. And now the Mobius for Mike Tolzman. Remember the scoring is determined by three factors, form, distance, and the degree of difficulty of the trick. He's edging in easily. This is, comes around. Pretty good effort. Not the distance that Dave Dodder had, but nonetheless a good job for uh, Mike Tolzman. So after falling on his first jump, Tolzman is rebounded on the last two with a couple of pretty good jumps. The defending champion in trouble. Scott Clack with his third jump of the day. It'll be a Mobius. Well, and he does the Mobius as well as anybody. It really is pretty. His skis are close together. He uses very long skis, 70 to 72 inches. And it gives you a good idea of the rotation, the twist of turns he goes through in the air. Awkward position, cutting across both weights with the handle wrapped behind your back. There it is, right there, beautiful maneuver. A lot more height off that jump than some of the other skiers. And he got a lot of distance because of it, so Scott Clack may have pulled himself back into the lead now. We are not privy to the judges' scoring as it goes, so you don't know for sure who's leading, but you get a pretty good idea. The Mastercraft and Ski Supreme boats bringing the skiers back, and they certainly do a wonderful job out there on the water, those boats and the drivers powered by those PCM engines. Ski Supreme and Mastercraft a part of the Coors Light International Water Ski Tour. Dave Dotter with his final jump of the day, and if he can pull off a great one, he may cement himself as the champion here this afternoon. He said he would do a 720. We'll see if he changed his mind. Some of the skiers on the last attempt, as I mentioned before, will change their routine, see if they can score more points on another maneuver. He scheduled a 720, looks like it right here, comes around, loses a the handle there. That's the chance you take when you have a single wrap and have to hand-to-hand -hand the second portion of the 720. So with that fall, Dave Dotter does not score on that final jump. He'll throw that out, and those are the point totals for each of his first three. Joey Allo with his final jump of the day. Should be a flip if Joe stays as scheduled. Joe Allo skis at SeaWorld in Orlando. Gets a lot of practice doing these maneuvers there. He didn't get as good a flip on his third attempt to try to get a little further. Oh, he changed up and he did a gainer there. So Joe Allo exercising his option to change did exactly that and pulled off a gainer on his final jump instead of the flip he had scheduled. 
The final jump for Joe Allen, not his best. And with the fall on his second jump, his point totals on one and three will not carry him through to victory. A great crowd gathering here at Champions Lake. Mike Tolsman with his final jump of the day. Now it's up in the air as to what Mike will do because he fell on his first jump. So we'll see what he pulls off here when he comes to the ramp. He fell on his front flip. Now he has scheduled here either a double front or a gainer, but he fell on his front flip, so we're a little up in the air exactly what he's doing. It looked like he might try a front flip here. There it is. Oh, he goes for the double front. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that, but he changed to shorter skis to quicken his rotation to see if he could get all the way around. He's really going for it today. Dives off the end here. A little shorter, shorter skis. Hopeful, hope to get the rotation all the way around. He doesn't quite get there landing on his back. This is a pretty hard falls in freestyle lands, you can see. Well, he didn't have the height that he needed to get out there and perform two flips in the air, and thus he falls into the water. So Mike Tolzman's day is finished. So Mike Tolzman falling on that final jump. He also fell on his first jump, so only two jumps of his four will count toward point totals, and that spells a fourth place finish. Scott Clack with his final jump. He's indicated that he'll try the double flip too. Now we will see if he can pull it off, Wayne. You're shaking your head. <laughs> no one's ever done the double front, so it'll be interesting. Scotty has tried a 1080, which is three revolutions uh, before, but I've never seen him try the double front. He's really going to have to kick and snap it around. Edges well. Here we go. Coming around. Whoa! He came close. He nearly had it. That was a great, tremendous effort by Scotty Clack. So close on that jump. He nearly pulled it off. Here's another look at it. The difference being he gets a quick snap of the legs at the top, gets the required height to give him more time to come around. And you can see right there, he just is a little bit short. But he was right over his skis. Uh, that was an impressive effort. I, I haven't seen him come that close before. He just lost the handle of the rope when he hit the water. Just a touch short, otherwise he would have skied away from that. That would have set the place wild. Great effort nonetheless from Scott Clack. Despite falling on that excellent effort on his final jump, Scott Clack still has enough points to become the winner for the ninth consecutive stop on the tour. And he's standing down there with Wayne. Thank you, Kevin. Scotty, you survived another fantastic freestyle round. You were a fraction from making a double front somersault, uh, uh, but you got a, a little nosebleed there. Yeah, um, I got a little bit longer ski today, and um, I came around, and I, I saw the water just before I hit, and my knees were a little bit too close together, and I hit my hit my knee with my nose, but luckily I didn't break anything. Well, congratulations again. You're definitely the class of the freestyle event. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Kevin, back to you. The measure of the true champion, he's unbeaten through nine tour stops, Scott Clack. He is the winner here in Shreveport this afternoon, to no one's surprise. And the rest of the results from the men's freestyle competition. The man who seems to be rising as the challenger to Scott Clack is Dave Dotter. He finishes second this afternoon, and that's the second time that Dotter has come in second place on this tour this year, despite not having made the final four until Somerset, Kentucky. So Dotter finishing second here this afternoon to Scotty Clack's championship form. Joey Allo finishes third and Mike Tolzman fourth. All set for the women's slalom competition here from Champion Lake in Shreveport, Louisiana. And of course, some of the top women competitors in the world all here to do battle today. Here's how the point standings are currently overall. Camille Duval with a commanding 400 point lead. Karen Roberge in second, Dina Brush third, and Susie Graham fourth. Now Karen does not figure into the final four, neither does Susie in this afternoon's competition, but both Camille Duvall and Dina Brush will ski for the championship here in Shreveport today. Kim Laskoff is seated second and will ski against Dina Brush. Jennifer Leachman is the fourth seed and will ski off against Camille. Kim Laskoff for her run at 32 off. Now she must get through the course turn all six buoys and go out the gates because Dina Brush has made it successfully already. If she should fall, it's all over for Kim Laska. But as I mentioned, she's been a very good skier recently. In fact, in the last two stops, she has finished second both times. So she's found her groove and she's really skiing well near the end of the season here. 
She's a left foot forward skier, turns better on one, three, and five generally, and she's looking fairly strong right here. Her skiing really has picked up in the last couple of weeks, and it uh, looks like Dina and she are having quite a competition this afternoon. An excellent duel so far. Both skiers through the course at 32 off. Dina Brush at 35 off. Now this will be very difficult for the skiers to get through. This is a very tough pass. This is no gimme pass right here. The girls really have to get with the program. Now you'll see Dina here. She's coming into the gates. She's going to swing out to the left side of the boat. The objective of the start is to be wide for number one without carrying too much speed. She's slowing down, makes her turn, get a pretty good one, comes into two. A little, little late. She's going to have to play catch up here. So far, she's doing it successfully around the next one, and that's where she loses it, going around number four. So Dina Brush in the water. At 35 off, she does not finish the course, and we'll wait and see the official scoring on her. They're going to give her three and a half at 35 off, so now it's up to Kim Laskoff, Wayne, to better that. Yeah, as we see Dina here, she's coming in a little late. She's having to turn with more speed, and she gets a little slack rope, pulls along to get around number four, and she still has a lot of speed. She sort of lunges and falls over, and she can't pull, pull out of that one. So it's up to Kim Laskoff now. She must better three and a half at 35 off in order to move into the finals. She certainly is capable of that. Her best is a half buoy at 38 off. So she has sailed through at 35 off without a problem in the past. Number one's going to be so important for her. Her good side. Get a little slack. She's coming late into two here. She's down course a ways. The boat doesn't wait for you once you make a little mistake. She's looking pretty good, though. She recovered very nicely, and she is through. Around number four and into the finals. So Kim Laskoff did a fine job of recovering. Lynn. Yeah, she sure did. She didn't look good coming out of two at all, and I was surprised she got that far. But once again, she's sort of in the groove in the last couple of weeks. And she knew she only had to get around four into the wakes in order to beat Dina by a half a buoy. 21-year-old Jennifer Leachman into the water at 35 off. She's yet to win on the tour this year. Would love dearly to win here in Shreveport in front of this huge crowd at Champion Lake. Jennifer's going to have to find just the right combination of angle and speed to number one to get a good start. She's a little narrow there. Ski jumps out of the water. She's a little fast coming into two, but she's really using her reach well. She's coming rebounding very well. Whoa, good turn off of four. Uh -oh. oh, she nearly one. got through, but she lost the handle on the rope, Wayne, or I think she would have gotten through the course. As it is, she gets around uh, round five. And we'll wait and see the official credit that she'll be given, but I think she'd have made it had she not lost the rope. She was getting progressively later in the early stages of the pass, but then she had a good turn off on her offside, number four and came into five, and being a left foot forward skier, I figured she would nail that, but I guess she just didn't get her hand on the handle well or had too much slack and couldn't hang on, so she gets a score of four and a half at 35 off. A nice pass for Jennifer. Camille Duval in the water at 35 off. She must better four and a half buoys at this distance in order to move into the showdown final against Kim Laskoff. Jennifer Leachman, Camille's opponent, going down at four and a half at 35 off, so she needs to get better than four and a half in order to move into the finals. This is not going to be easy. Camille's looking very strong here. When She's the rope gets shorter, everything becomes more radical. Faster acceleration, deacceleration to slow down the turn, and she's, she's got in. it. She's into the finals. The crowd really got behind her as she made her march down the course, and she now moves into the finals against Kim Laskoff, defeating Jennifer Leachman with five buoys at 35 off. So the final will be Camille Duval and Kim Laskoff. You know, you couldn't have a tournament without the diligent work behind the scenes of these people, the judges and the officials, led by CWO, our tournament director, Tony Baggiano, Carol Lowe, all of these folks doing such hard work without being seen, without being known, Jack Walker, Bob Long, and Ed Brazil. And we congratulate all of them on a job well done once again here at the Tournament of Champions in Shreveport, Louisiana. The top seed, Camille Duval, at 28 off, must get through the course in order to remain in this championship round against Kim Laskoff, who is easily through at 28 off. But you'd expect Camille to have no trouble at getting through at this distance. Shouldn't be any problem for Camille. And you see here, she's pulling out for the gates. And she'll make a slow turn, pull progressively harder. Her hardest pull is right there, right before the edge change at the second wake. 
She comes around two, looking fairly strong. And I think she's gonna have this pass. Nice turn on four. She really is looking exceptionally smooth today. I think this is gonna be a good competition here in the, in the finals. No problem for either lady at 28 off and they'll move to 32 off. Kim Laskoff at 32 off. This is the championship round between Kim Laskoff and Camille Duval and Kim trying to set that pace that Camille's gonna have to match. In her semifinal round, she went through easily at this distance, so we'll see if she can do it again. This is not an automatic pass, 32 off. Kim has got to get a good start here on one. She's a left foot four, turns better on that side. She's looking in trouble on four. She's down, oh, there she goes. She didn't get completely around three, and then she lost her balance as she came across the wake. And then the run was over at 32 off. So a little bit surprising that Kim Laskoff, two and a half at 32 off. Here she's coming across the way because she's pulling longer there. She changes her edge late and then she gets her shoulder over and the rope tightens and then pulls her out in the front across both wakes. So Camille Duval, the reigning champion of each of the last two tour stops, the current points leader on this circuit, is in the water, and she has it right in front of her. All she has to do is beat two and a half buoys at this distance, and she will win her third tournament stop in a row. She was the top seed coming in, and you expect her to do this without any problem. The crowd really getting behind her as she rounds the second buoy now. Around the third buoy, she's through the wake and around four, and she has won the tournament, and she's gonna run out the course, Wayne. Yeah, she's looking very strong today. I, uh, technically, she's uh, very good today. So Camille Duval is the winner of the women's slalom here in Shreveport. All right, the women's slalom here in Shreveport is now in the books. Camille Duval is the winner, her third tour victory in a row, and Wayne is standing by with her dockside. Let's go down to Wayne. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Camille, fine effort. You looked technically, I thought, great today. How did you feel? Um, I felt pretty good out there on my first round. I would like to have gotten through that 35 off pass, but unfortunately it wasn't the cards for me today. And then after running that pass and having to go right back out again against Kim Laskoff, I was just a little tired because of the heat here today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, congratulations again, and uh, you've got it all wrapped up, so what are your thoughts going into Indianapolis? Well, that's no reason to back off. I sure would like to go in and win in Indianapolis, too, and it's great to be the second-time winner on the tour. Thanks again. Great, thank you. Back to you, Kevin. All right, with Camille's victory here this afternoon, she wraps up the overall title in the women's slalom. Kim Laskoff finishes second for the third stop in a row. Jennifer Leachman third, and Dina Brush comes in fourth. Jumps, bumps, and thrills with the men's distance jumping. That's all coming up on the USA Network from the Tournament of Champions here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Important things in water skiing of all types is safety. And of course, that also includes not only the skis, but the clothing and the attire that the skiers wear. And earlier, Wayne had a chance to talk about it. You know, it's so important to wear the proper equipment in water skiing. And past shows, we've looked at the different skis used in the respective events, but we've never looked closely to the clothing that the skier wears. And next to me is one of the top Australian jumpers, Jeff Carrington. And Jeff, you've got a wetsuit on, an arm sling, a helmet. Let's start with the wetsuit. Uh, how, what's the difference in this wetsuit than you would normally buy in a store? Okay, this wetsuit's designed specifically, specifically for jumping. It's three quarter length, it's sleeveless, and it's got the buoyancy built into it. Uh, the buoyancy's good to aid you in, in if you crash, yeah. for protection, and it's also double reinforcing in the bottom area. And the arm sling, uh, what's the purpose of that? Okay, the purpose of an arm sling are twofold. One, to hold your arms in better when you're cutting to the ramp, and the other one, when you get in the air, you've got to get pulled along, not down. So when you've got the arm sling on, it'll lower your center of gravity to enable you to get pulled along. Mm -hmm. And the gloves are for hand protection and grip, and I see there are a few bruises on the helmet. Yeah, there's a couple of battle scars on the helmet. Um, I've had this helmet a while, and I've taken the odd spill or two in it, so yeah. it's come in handy. Well, no spills this weekend. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Wayne. And over on my left here is uh, Michael Shaylander. He's the tour leader in the slalom event. Uh, Michael's uh, slalom puts a little different demands on the body, and consequently, he's got different equipment. He does have gloves for grip, but he's got a different vest. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this vest is specially designed for slalom skiing. It, you can move real nice in it, and it's still got good protection for your ribs and your kidneys, and it's a good vest for slalom skiing. Well, good luck in the competition. Thank you a lot, Wayne. As you can see, whether you're a recreational or tournament skier, the importance of wearing the proper equipment can't be overstated. Back up to you, Kevin. 
The men's distance jumping event, one of the exciting moments for the big crowd that's gathered here at Shreveport, Louisiana. And currently, the point standings overall on the tour look like this. Mike Hazelwood's on top, but Sammy Duvall breathing down his neck just 200 behind. Glenn Thurlow is third, and Lucky Lowe, who's really coming on strong. Victory last time in Birmingham. He is now in fourth place. So the men's distance jumping, the elimination round. Jeff Carrington, Mike Hazelwood, Carl Roberts, and Lucky Lowe, two of the top seeds eliminated in that round. Bruce Neville with his third jump. 176 is his best. He's the best, uh, the first skier in the water, so he doesn't really have an idea what it's going to take, but he knows he's got to go in the 190 range, I would think. He's got to push it up there. He needs to get a little better spring off the top of the ramp. That means his position must be solid. Arms in at the bottom of the ramp and really kick. That's a better jump there. He got that one out there. Well, he had three improving jumps, it looks like. that. Whether that'll be far enough to keep him in the top, we'll, wait, we'll have to wait and see. 186 is his third. For Neville, his series of three jumps seemingly very excellent in terms of progression because he started at 172 and just kept going up. Mike Morgan, a finalist in this tournament in the slalom skiing, also here in the jump distance jumping. So Morgan in his first jump. Getting ready to go, has to beat 186, the mark put up there by Bruce Neville. Well, we saw earlier that Mike is an excellent slalom skier and he is a very solid jumper. Waiting out very wide, generates speed to the ramp with the cut, springs off the cut. Very off good the opening jump, jump for Mike Morgan. Very good opener. I think he may have topped Neville with that jump. Very smooth, solid looking jump. Like he's indicating he wants to stop the boat for some reason or another there. Perhaps 190 it's... feet for Morgan, so he did indeed top Neville on his first try. It's a very easy effort to go 190 feet. I think if this is any indication, uh, the later jumpers could be hitting 200 today. So we may see a world record set. It stands at 202, but Morgan getting 190, hitting the ramp at 67 miles an hour. Mike Morgan with his second jump. Now he can really go for it, Wayne, because he's already topped Neville's mark of 186 with that 190 jump, and he's got two to go. Yeah, he has nothing to lose. 190 feet, a pretty good warm-up jump. That was the easiest 190-foot jump I've ever seen. And uh, this could be even further on this one. Waiting very late, turns the skis around, gets good angle, jumps awake a little bit. When the skier jumps awake, it gets his angle, loses a little angle, and gets his arms stretched, and he decided to let go on that one. So Mike Morgan, with a nice jump of 190 feet, then has his binders break on him, and he doesn't have a spare, so he has to go in. Tough yeah, break for him. It is a tough break. I'm surprised he doesn't have a backup ski, but he's satisfied. I believe 190 feet is his longest jump ever. Kevin Slayton, along with Wayne Grimbich, and we'll be coming back with more of the thrilling men's distance jumping from the Tournament of Champions. Glenn Thurlow out of Australia, the world record holder with a jump of 202 feet. And you know, he's got his sights set on surpassing his own record. He needs to beat 190, the mark set by Mike Morgan earlier this afternoon. Glenn is a very pretty jumper. He is a great technician in the water, good cut, an excellent spring right here. Nice, beautiful form in the air. He pushed it out there quite a ways past the 170 mark for sure. Here's another look at it. Right here, a nice quick snap of the legs at the top of the ramp, just arches over his skis and floats on down. He's a pretty skier and obviously can go as far and has gone farther than anybody else, jumping 102 feet. The 202 mark that he put up there, of course, was done down in Australia. This one, 187, and he hit that ramp at nearly 70 miles an hour, so Thurlow with a very fine first jump, just three feet shy of Morgan. Glenn Thurlow with his final chance today to surpass the mark of Mike Morgan, 190 feet. Thurlow with jumps in that range, but not measuring up to snuff so far. But he is the world record holder with a jump of 202 feet, and He's capable, certainly, of surpassing Morgan on this jump. This is his last try, and here he comes to the ramp. I think you'll see Glenn really dig in here. Come on. Uh, he's a little off. I think his first jump's going to be his best. He's just a little bit back at the bottom of the ramp and not able to get his full extension off the end, missing the needed lift. He jumps the wakes a little bit there, 
not putting you in a good position to spring. And right there, you can see his knees are bent and his skis split. So he'll end up with 187 feet as his best effort. Glenn Thurlow trying to knock Mike Morgan off the top of the ladder, 175 on his last jump. So his best of 187 moves him into second place, but still trailing Mike Morgan. Bruce Neville now in third. Sammy Duval approaching the ramp for his second jump of the afternoon, 185 on the first effort. He needs to top 190. That's the mark that Mike Morgan put up there. Sammy has a great feel on the ramp. He usually gets a tremendous spring. It's been a little off the last couple of weeks, but he's only 200 points trailing Mike Hazelwood in the overall jumping title. Here we go, second effort. He sailed out there a pretty good distance, but I'm not so sure that he surpassed Morgan's 190. 190 feet's a long way to go. There he is at the bottom of the ramp there. You can see his legs were straight at the top, but his skis spread a little bit, not giving him the full lift he might have. Well, he has overtaken Morgan now. 191 on that jump for Sammy Duvall. So he is the new leader, and he hit the ramp at better than 70 miles an hour. That's the fastest we've seen today, and he's really, uh, as I mentioned before, he's one of the great pressure skiers of all time. Sammy Duvall with his final jump of the afternoon. He's already the leader with that jump of 191. He's displaced Mike Morgan, who had jumped 190. But Sammy knows he's got to push it up a little higher, Wayne. I think he's going to have to go two or three, four feet further. Uh, Mike and Lucky are jumping very well in practice. I think you'll see him take about the same cut and try to really kick this one. He's a little stretched. Not bad, but pretty nice jump. I don't know. That might be a little further. He's happy with that. He's very happy with it. See if he pushed it past the 191 that he had knocked down the last time. But he's very happy with the jump, and he should know. Here's another look at Here it. Here we go. It sounds a nice spring. You can see his skis are more together. He's really pulling it together today. That was a good jump. That was a good jump. 195 feet for Sammy. That not only puts him into the lead here today, but it ties the tour record set by Lucky Lowe in Birmingham. Sammy Duval with a jump of 195 feet is the winner here in Shreveport this afternoon and in the process tying the tour record. All right, the winner of the men's distance jumping, Sammy Duval, and in the process he ties the tour record and he's standing by with Wayne now. Thanks, Kevin. Sammy, uh, the spring's back. It's back, Wayne. I'm really excited about it. Yeah. It looked terrific today. Uh, what have you been doing differently? Well, Wayne, I've really been concentrating on trying to keep my right ski in front of my left in the turn, and subsequently that's got my hips up into the handle. I'm getting so much more speed, and then getting my old trademark, my lift back off the top of the ramp, and that made the difference today. Now you're in a good position coming into Indianapolis. Well, that's exactly what I needed. You know, Shreveport, I had a hard fall here last year, and it was my downfall. I ended up losing the tour this year. It was a positive note. Uh, I'm up by like two or 300 points now, so I'm looking forward to going to Indianapolis next weekend. Congratulations again, and good luck. Thanks, Wayne. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Wayne, thank you. And of course, as Sammy said, he is the new leader now on the tour in overall points. Thanks to his victory here today. Mike Morgan finishes second, Glenn Thurlow third, and Bruce Neville fourth. Wayne, it's been an exciting day here at Champion Lake, and we have more to come on our Coors Light International Water Ski Tour. It's the Coors Light International Water Ski Tour Championships from Indianapolis, Indiana, August 24th and 25th. This is the date when the 19th